Thank you. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. The Lord bless us today. He will bless me. He will bless you. And make us triumphant in ministry in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for this time. Thank you for what you are doing in our time, in our generation, that you are raising up men and women, ministers in various areas and with various gifts in various denominations. We're asking, O oh Lord, that you impart life, passion, vision to everyone in Jesus' name. That after this period of the ministers and the professionals and Christian leaders meeting together for such a conference like this, our ministries will never be the same again. There will be new power, new strength, new vision, new enthusiasm, a new progress in the work of the Lord in Jesus' name. Confirm your truth, your word, your power in every life. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. We started on Friday and we had the first study concerning a minister, a messenger, concerning a person in the Old Covenant, Old Testament, how the Lord called him, how the Lord commissioned him, how the Lord propelled him into ministry. And we learn from that why, because the New Testament says, all those things that were reaching at four time, before this time, before the New Testament, that they are reaching for our learning upon whom the ends of the world are come, that through the grace of God, the same grace in them, the same strength in them, the same power in them, the same compelling ministry and vision on them, we will have encouragement and we will have the propelling power to launch us into the ministry that the Lord is calling us to. Joshua is the person we're concentrating on at this time. And today we're coming to Joshua chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 1 all through to verse 5. Divine assurance for fulfillment in ministry it's one thing to have to have the call to ministry it's another thing to have the confidence and to have the confirmation from heaven every time that this is the calling of the lord upon our lives and to have the trust and the faith and the confidence in god to be able to plow through and succeed in ministry here we have assurance from god divine assurance for fulfillment in ministry. Joshua chapter 1, we're looking at verse 1. It says, Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua. The Lord spake unto Joshua. Now, Moses had already commissioned Joshua. He had laid hands on him, he had imparted on him. The spirit that conquers and the spirit of courage that he will take the world and he will take the people of God out of the wilderness and lead them to the promised land. But he wanted the voice of God to speak unto him and he waited and it says God himself spoke unto him saying unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister. Look at verse 2. It's saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, therefore, because the nation needed a leader, and the leader 
the first one, the foremost one, the five inch one, the uncompromising one is gone. And we need a replacement. It says, therefore, because Moses is departed and is gone to the great beyond, Joshua, go over. There is Jordan, thou, and all the people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Look at verse 3. It says in verse 3, every place, the sole of your foot shall tread upon every place. If you stand in a local place, that's what I give to you. If you go beyond and you have the strength to get up and to move on and to go beyond the little territory, that's what you have because every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon. If you don't say there's a lion in the way, there are difficulties in the way, and the road there and the territory there is so hilly. And because that's a mountainside, I don't think I can get there. Well, if you don't get there, it will be, not be given to you. But if you say, look at the mountainside, look at the hilly side, look at the raw side, and look at the primitive section, and look at all those areas, and nothing beats your back. And nothing restrains you or restricts you. And you say, I'll go. There, I'll go. Here, I'll go. Everywhere, I'll go. Every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon. That have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. And then he tells us, look at verse 5. In verse 5, it says, there shall not any man any man be able to stand before thee you see what well, many people fear people like themselves and because they fear people like themselves they might know the bible they might know the word they might have the ministry they might have vision they might have a compelling mission where to go what to do but because they fear the giants that are there they fear the look of the people that are there they fear the appearance of the people that are there it may be the way they talk they hope they talk tough and they talk sharp and they talk hard it might be because of the way they act and their appearance so they are afraid they cannot go where they ought to go they retreat they turn back they have the word they have the calling but because that man look at his stature that man look at his appearance that man look at his face that's a lion of a man that's a giant that's a goliath but if you face the situation and you face the field and you face your calling and you do not allow any man to frighten you intimidate you beat you back resist you and you stay on the calling that the lord had given you you find when you get there all those giants will clear out of the way all those people will throw off language with rough utterance and with rough brutal force as you come and you depend upon the calling and the charisma and the gifts of God in your life no man shall be able to stand before thee look at that all the days of thy life is something to be bold when you are young or you have not gone through experiences in life in your younger days no man shall be able to stand before me you are youthful 
and the strength of the youth and the courage of the youth is before thee. And then when you are getting older and older and you have met the Canaanites, you have met the Hivites, you have met the Jebusites, and you have met all the Hittites, and you have seen all what they could do, and you have heard about them, and you have heard their history, and you have gone through what they've done to other people like you with all that experience as you get older 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 you become a little bit timid than you were when you were a teenager you become a little bit more fearful than you were when you started the ministry because you're looking at them. You're not looking at your God. And you're forgetting the promise the Lord has given unto you. And he said, all the days of your life, young, middle age, old age, aged, he said, no man shall be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses who confronted Pharaoh, as I was with Moses who confronted the magicians, as I was with Moses all the time that he was in the land of Egypt and in the wilderness, as he confronted Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, as he confronted all those people that contradicted the way of the Lord being established by Moses. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. You need a great amen there. He said, I will be with thee. I will not fail thee. Amen. I will not forsake thee. Amen. Divine assurance for fulfillment in ministry. Three things we're looking at in this passage. Number one is the divine proclamation of the omniscient God. The God who knows all things. The God who sees all things. The God who knows the end from the beginning. The God who knows your old age time from when you were a little baby. The Lord who knew omniscient. He knows knows all things. He knew where you will be at a particular period, in a particular year, and what you will do, and where he will send you to. That God that knows all things, he makes a proclamation, divine proclamation of the omniscient God. Number two is the divine promise from the omnipotent God. The divine promise from the God who is almighty all powerful and he can do all things and whatever he has promised that's what he will do because nothing can stop the power of god in your life in your ministry in your family nothing can stop the power of god in your ministration no matter who is there or who is not there the one that has all power, all might, and the one that is faithful every time, all through our days, is the one that gave the promise he will do what he has said. In your life, in your ministry, in your family, he will do what he has said. The divine promise from the omnipotent God. Number three, a divine presence of the omnipresent God. It says, Joshua, come on. I'm by your side all the time. I'll never fail you. I'll never forsake you. Because he that is present everywhere at the sea is present there. Over the sea is present there. In the wilderness is present there. When you confront the Canaanites is present there. Anywhere, everywhere you go. As he has sent you, yeah, the captain of the army of the Lord, he'll go before you. He'll come behind you. He'll be beside you. He will live with power and strength inside you and with him. All things are possible. Anywhere, everywhere you go, you'll find he's always there. 
If sickness knocks at the door, the healer is always there. If poverty knocks at the door, the provider, Jehovah Jireh, he is always there. And if the enemies knock at the door, the Lord, the God of battles, and the king of glory is always there it will be with you in jesus name the divine presence of the omnipresent god let's look at number one here number one is the divine proclamation of the omniscient god joshua chapter one looking at verse one again it says now after the death of moses the servant of the lord it came to pass that the lord spake unto joshua the son of Nun, moses servant saying what did he say verse two in verse three he said moses my servant is dead now therefore arise go and he says go over this jordan thou and all the all these people unto the land don't leave anyone behind remember what moses told pharaoh not a hoof will be left behind all these people the children take them along in the ministry the youths take them along in ministry the men the women take them along the fearful the timid the cowardly the falling the backsliding get them up and make sure that everyone goes along with you we are all going to the promised land where we'll get there Amen. promised land Amen. promised land you get there in Jesus name all of us Christ will take us along he will get you there it says all the people unto the land which I do give to them even to the children of Israel divine proclamation of the omniscient God. Look at uh, three things here. Number one, the departure and promotion of Moses. The departure and promotion of Moses. Number two, the demonstration of patience by his minister. The demonstration of patience by his minister. Number three, the deadly de delineation. That is the description and the perimeter of his ministry. Look at number one. Number one, the departure and promotion of Moses. Look at the first part of verse one there now. After the death of Moses, after the departure of Moses, the servant of the Lord. Look at the first part of verse 2. It says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, that word dead, don't allow that to confuse you. We have a limited time and period over here on earth. And then we cross over to our eternal heavenly residence we leave the temporary uh, temporal residence here and we leave this uh, you know place this earth of dust and noise and confusion and commotion and then we go to a residence with the angels of God we go to the residence where there'll be no shortage of water and where there'll be no murmuring of the mixed multitude and where there'll be no rebellion of Korah, Dathan and Abiram where there'll be no conflict with any Pharaoh or Egyptian we go to our residence where nothing will jolt us there's no sickness there there's no suffering there there are no tears there there is no sorrow there there is no death there and Moses left this temporal place and he went to the eternal place is actually a promotion we depart from this place and we go higher to the highest heaven we used to hear about God we believe him but we didn't see him and we have not seen him 
him physically. No man shall see my face on earth and leave. But now Moses went to the great beyond. It been hearing the voice of God. Now he can see the face of God. It been hearing the, of the throne of judgment. He can see the throne. It's been hearing of the angels. My angel will go with you and lead you there. Now he could see not only one angel, myriads of angels. It's been seeing all the commission, the commandment. The Lord gave unto him. Now he has the commendation and the reward. It's promotion. When a believer lives here and he goes to the great beyond. Look at Revelation chapter 14. We're looking at verse 13. Revelation chapter 14 verse 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me. It says, right, blessed at the dead which die in the Lord. Blessed at the dead which die in the Lord. Yea, says the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. That departure spells promotion in every life of a servant of God, a child of God, a son, a daughter of God that leaves this realm and goes to the great beyond. Look at number two here. Number two is the demonstration of patience by his minister. We have already read Joshua chapter 1 verse 2. Moses is gone. And the children of Israel were just there. And what's the next way forward? And some people that have heard that, uh, you know, Joshua had been commissioned because Moses laid hands on him in their presence. Some of them might be in a hurry. Hurry up. Get up. Look, we've been there in the wilderness for 40 years, and now it's that time to go on, and you are the leader. Rise up and move. The patience of a minister. And look at something here in Isaiah chapter 30. I'm reading from verse 18. Isaiah chapter 30. And we're looking at verse 18. You'll see that God waits. God waits to see what's your attitude. Are you impatient? Are you hurry, hurry, hurry man? Are you a hurry, hurry woman? Or do you wait? He waits and watches whether you will wait. That's why as Joshua waited. And now the Lord saw the patience of his minister. Look at that in Isaiah chapter 30 verse 18. It says, therefore will the Lord wait. It's looking for those who will be like Absalom and the sea's power. Therefore, will the Lord wait. It's looking for those who will be like Korah, Dithan, and Abiram, and will say, Are we not all leaders? And why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? And they seize power. They seize authority. And they're so much in a hurry. They want to be this or that. And the Lord will wait. The Lord waits to see the people that will turn the church into a political entity that they begin to campaign. You know who I am, and you know since I came, and you know this, and you know this, and they're campaigning, and they're campaigning with everything. They can campaign with. They can campaign with money. They can campaign with voice. They can campaign with tribe. But the Lord will be watching. Why don't they put that man there? The people are crying. The people are shouting. Why don't they put that man there? Because the Lord is watching. He doesn't want to find a religious politician on his people. He doesn't want to find an Absalom on his church. He doesn't want to find somebody who just wants to seize power. And he says, I am here. I am here, I call the shots, and I make myself, if you people don't know my quality and my value, I am going to demonstrate that this is who I am. The Lord does not want a religious politician to be over his own church. Therefore, will the Lord wage that 
he may be gracious unto you and therefore will he be exalted that he may have mercy upon you for the Lord is a God of judgment blessed are all they that wait for him the Lord waits the top of the verse at the end of the verse it says the people who are patient and the people who wait and the people who don't campaign for leadership for authority as if they are looking for a political position in the church it says blessed are they that wait for him and so joshua waited he knew he has been there before he was one of the twelve what caleb that came and went to the land of the Canaanites. He knew the road. He knew the way. He knew all the meanderings and all the shortcuts. Yet, he waited. It's not about knowledge. It's not about skill. It's not about power. It's not about your eagerness. It's about, can you wait for God? Can you wait until he calls your name Joshua? My servant Moses is dead. Can you wait until he says, rise? He's sending you to the people and all these people lead them to the land that I've given unto them. Look at number three here. Number three is the delineation and the perimeter of his ministry look at chapter uh, 1 verse 4 we're looking at verse 4 now in joshua it says from the wilderness of this lebanon even unto the great river the river euphrates all the land of the hittites unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. The Lord delineated, defined, and drew, and dictated the perimeter of the ministry of the conquest that Joshua will have. Isn't that what God does every time? Look at Acts chapter 9 verse 6. Acts chapter 9. We're reading there from verse 6. Here is Saul who became Paul asking the Lord. Now, oh, Paul was an educated man. Paul was an intelligent man. And Paul was a fervent man. Paul, even from the days of his persecuting the church, he was a forthright man. And he was a determined man, a visionary man. But now, after he got born again, you see, when we're born again, a lot of things change in our heart, in our mind, in our life. All that uh, kind of boisterous attitude, all that kind of, uh, you know, pouncing on other people, all that kind of imposing ourselves on other people and creating a kind of ministry for ourselves, all that that will vanish away when we're truly converted and God himself he defines where he wants us to be and what he wants us to be and all those apostles were there already and now as Saul became converted and he met the Lord look at his attitude and look at what Christ himself ordained for him. It says in verse 6, And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, you are now the Lord of my life, the captain of my ship, and the director of my life. Lord, what will thou have me to do? I see that apostles are there already. What will you have me to do? I see that prophets are there, evangelists are there, teachers are there, pastors are there. I see that uh, you have been persecuting the church, so I know where they are spread. I know everything about the church. They are all there. And you have enough ministers already, but can I do something? What will you have me to do? Let the 
Lord define. Let the Lord dictate. Let the Lord describe. This is what you are to do. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Lord, you are putting me in suspense. I want to know now. I want to see now. I want to be able to hear from you directly. Who is going to talk to me in the city? All those people that have been persecuting, how are they going to talk to me? Tell me. The Lord said, no. Go to the city and be in suspense and be waiting. And be waiting in prayer and be waiting in supplication and be waiting in expectation and be waiting in full trust that the one you've given your life to, he will put you in the right place. The one you have believed, your Jesus, your Savior, the captain of your soul, he will put you where you ought to be. There's no struggling with the apostles in Jerusalem. There is no struggling with Peter, with James, with John. There's no struggling, there's no campaign. Paul going to the church and saying, you know, I know the Pharisees, I know the Sadducees, I know the Sanhedrin, I know everybody. If I become a leader of this apostolic team, I'm telling you, I'll round every one of them up. I know them. I know where they're hiding. Uh -uh, no campaign. What will you have me to do? And the Lord said, go to the city. It shall be told you what you will do. And because of that, when he got to Damascus, it wasn't, you know, going from house to house and saying, I am Paul now, and things are different now, and I'm good. You're going to see the greatest preacher of your life. No, he went to his chamber, and for three days and three nights, he was praying. He was still, Lord, I'm still waiting. I'm in suspense. What will you have me to do? Look at verse 15. In verse 15 there he says, But the Lord said unto him, unto Ananias, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me. A chosen vessel unto me. Lord, what does that mean? A chosen vessel unto you. He will is a chosen man that will write my revelation. And he will write 14, Hebrews uh, included, 14 out of the 27 books of the New Testament. It's a chosen vessel to take my gospel and to take the good news and the message of salvation. He will take that to the kings and to Israel and to the Gentiles. It's the chosen vessel I will send into Rome, the very capital of the Gentile world, and I'll send him everywhere. He'll preach in the synagogue, he'll preach in Athens, he'll preach on the field. It was stretching out all those erroneous people. He is a chosen vessel when you wait for the time of the Lord and his hands reaches you, and then he leaves you up and he puts you in ministry that's what will happen it's a chosen vessel to me to bear my name before the gentiles number one and before the kings number two and before the children of israel we're coming to point number two now point number two we're looking at the divine promise from the omnipotent god the divine promise from the omnipotent God. We're looking at Joshua chapter 1, reading from verse 3. Every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon that have I given unto you. That have I given unto you. Joshua, what do you think? The Lord said, every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon that have I given unto Joshua said, he's not giving me as personal property. He's giving me as a representative of the children of Israel, of the descendants of 
Abraham. He had given it to Abraham, then to Isaac, then to Jacob. And then as I come now, I'm receiving this on behalf of the children of Israel. What he says he gives us is not a personal property, a private property, something that this is mine. Uh -uh. The church is not yours. The people are not yours. The congregation is not yours. You are his representatives. Anything he gives, the promise, the power, and the progress is not giving you as a personal private property is giving you as a representative is giving it to the nation of Israel and so when he says every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon he says that have I given unto you as I said unto Moses? We're looking at three things here. Number one, we're looking at the good promise for an active, surpassing faith. An active, surpassing faith. When God makes a promise, He wants our faith, the faith that receives, He wants that to be active number two the great promises for an advancing seeking faith if god says look at the land before you the land beyond you that i've given unto you you will get up you will move on you will seek you will search you will follow on and follow through the great promises for an advancing seeking faith number three god's promises appropriating strong faith let's look at number one there number one the good promise for an active surpassing faith and look at joshua chapter one reading from verse three again in verse three every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon that have i given unto you as i said unto Moses. Do you see that that is a conditional promise? Every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon. Joshua, you're standing as the captain of the army of the children of Israel. If you delegate everything and you say, you understand that Joshua at this time was more than 80 years of age. His colleague, Caleb, said is now 85 and he himself he was around that age and he didn't just sit back at home joshua why don't you sit down god said every place the sole of my foot shall tread upon that shall be mine if i sit there on the chair on the bench i sit there and i'm resting and relaxing and the sole of my feet is only over here in this little convenient comfortable zone then that's all i have but if i want to have there have there have there have there then i have to lead the army and i have to be there myself he he knew my age, he knew how old I am, and he knew how my strength might not be like the strength of a teenager, and yet he said, every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon that have I given unto you. That's why I'm a go-getter. That's why I'm moving from here to there, because that's how it will be given unto me. He said, as I said, Unto Moses, now, as you look at, uh, you know, all the conquests they had in the land of Canaan, you will see the kind of faith they had. As you go to chapter 6, we don't have time to read that now. The Lord said, those are the walls of Jericho. And you will go around Jericho. You will not speak a word. 
silent faith, silent faith, not a, a faith that is shouting and hollering and a faith that is, you know, bragging and boasting, silent faith. And you do that once a day, the second day, the third day, silent faith, and the fourth day, silent faith, and then the fifth and the sixth day, silent faith, and that silent faith, when I tell you to shout on the seventh day, now you have silent faith that culminates to shout in faith. And as you shout, the walls will come down. There are times in our lives where our faith and the faith is silent faith, like the faith of Daniel. He was in the lion's den, and he didn't say, Lions, I bind you, I command you, you will not bite me, and shouted, No, there is time for silent faith. They had said, Nobody should pray all this time, but he prayed. He prayed. He didn't argue with the people, he didn't argue with the edict. He went to his room and he paid, prayed. And now they said, They got him. We must throw him into the lion's den and then we have silent faith silent faith and he went in there to the lion's den he was still believing God and Darius said that this man God spared him because he believed in his God even though he didn't shout even though he didn't speak he had silent faith there is sight, sightless faith that he is, you don't see. That's what happened to Abraham. God gave him a promise. And without seeing anything that will show that God will answer him, sightless faith. And he had the promise. Look at Samson. And Samson, they're taking his eyes out. And, but his air began to grow, grow. His confidence began to grow. And his trust began to grow. And they didn't know that that man had sightless faith. He didn't even know where the poles are. And he told one man there, can you just show me where the poles are? And he showed him. And then he put his hands on those things. He was silent. It was sight, sightless. He couldn't see anything like Abraham calling those things would be not as though they were. And even though now his body was as good as dead, yet even though he could not see the evidence that God will give the promised child, he had the silent, sightless faith. Number three, there is also the singing faith. Look at Joshua on the battlefield, and the Lord said, Yeah had fasted and then he had prayed unto the Lord how shall we do because we don't have any strength to overcome these people and yet now he came to the field and the prophet of the Lord said believe his prophet and believe in the Lord your God and you will prosper and you will conquer what did he do he got all those singers together and he sang to the glory of God singing faith that now you are not crying you are not sober you, you are not not uh, sobbing, you're not, uh, you know, crying aloud, whatever, because you have singing faith. Look at Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas in the midnight, they prayed unto the Lord and they sang praises unto the Lord. And the foundation of the prison was shaking, and all the people, they were loose and set free. Why? Because they had singing faith. What kind of faith do we have? When we get to the battlefield and with the you know the faith that is complaining and murmuring I'm alone nobody is with me they are not contributing money and they are not helping I'm only here I'm you know spending my life there's no appreciation complaining that's not faith but when you have silent faith and when you have sightless faith and when you have singing faith every wall will fall before you Look at this in Acts of the Apostles chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 9. Acts of the Apostles chapter 18. And we're reading from verse 9. It says, Then speak the Lord unto Paul in the night by a vision. Be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace. Then in verse 10, in verse 10, for I am with thee, and no man shall 
shall search on thee to hurt thee for I have much people in this city with that promise you can have a silent faith as you are walking about in the street as you are going about your normal activity that faith is inside you silent you are not bragging you are not boasting you are not uh, contending with anybody you have the silent faith you have the sightless faith i have much people in this city but i can't see them it's a sightless faith it's not what you see it's what you believe and then you have sinking faith great is thy faithfulness morning by morning the new every day and you are singing to the lord all your jericho walls will fall down in jesus name we're looking at number two here number two is the great promises of an advancing seeking faith and advancing seeking faith as joshua rose up he remembered what the lord had told him and now every day when he rose up he was advancing today higher than yesterday tomorrow greater than today next week higher than this week because every time he was progressing every time he was advancing he did not allow a day to go there is planning there's strategy, there's vision, there's decision, there's determination, and there is progress that every day you just know today will add to the victory of yesterday. You know that the accomplishment today will add to the accomplishment of yesterday. You know the height today will add to the height of yesterday. You know it's a new day, it's a new week, and what happens today must go beyond what happened last time the, because of that you have this advancing every time and seeking every time the faith that seeks isn't that how we have all our good christian experiences number one saving faith saving faith you sought for the salvation of the lord seek ye the lord while he may be found call ye upon him where while is near let the wicked forsake his way and the righteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the lord for he will abundantly pardon seeking faith saving faith isn't that what happened advancing and the interest on your oars i'm saved i'm saved i'm saved last year i'm saved this year i'm saved we should advance there is sanctifying faith purifying their hearts by faith you move on it's not just you know the same thing you said yesterday and the same victory you had yesterday and the same triumph you had yesterday that's where you still are you are advancing and seeking there is saving faith there is sanctifying faith and there is strengthening faith the strength you do what the lord has called you to do for you shall receive power after that the holy ghost has come upon you and ye shall be my witnesses in jerusalem judea and in samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth that the god of heaven will strengthen you in the the inner man and immerse you and baptize you in the power of the Holy Ghost. We're not static, we're not stagnant, we're not remaining in one place. Everything we're doing, there must be advance, there must be a seeking the Lord for what we had not got before. Are you still seeking the Lord today? Are you every time? Praise God, I'm a child of God. You said that yesterday. Move on now. Praise God, I am saved. Praise the Lord. You said that last year. For 10 years now, you are saved. Why don't you seek the Lord for sanctification, for the purifying of your heart, that your heart, your soul, your spirit will be holy 
completely holy entirely holy because they say follow peace with all men in your express or have known that if you don't make advance if you don't progress you cannot make peace with all men the men you met last year simple-hearted people nice people grateful people it's easy to follow peace with them do you know that as you are developing as you are growing as you are having more success there are people, people that will be jealous of you there will be people that be eyeing you and eyeing your position and they will be saying we'll make it tough for him and you have different kinds of people today you didn't have the other time and you follow peace with them you have to be advancing from salvation to sanctification if you're going to be able to follow peace with all men there will be people that will criticize you there will be people that will cut you to pieces there will be people that will you know cut you down there will be people that will belittle you and say so and so who is that <laughs> we're here is you know doing this and doing that but all those things Sambalat will say Tobias will say if a fox go you have to follow peace with all of them and it's because you are advancing that's how you can follow the peace with all of them and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord you know the temptations of 30 years ago they are small they are minimal they're limited uh, to the temptations of today. There was no COVID at that time. Uh, there was no, you know, all the things we'll find now, they were not there at that time. So even if you were successful and you were following holiness and you were on top of the situation, those years passed, things are different now. The enemy, Satan, knowing that the coming of the Lord is very near, is making it tougher 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 for everyone and especially for the people who are preaching the gospel you know in the past you could go to school and just say does seek the lord and have that uh, you know fellowship there now if they say no prayer in the school and then there's not this there's not that you see things are tougher now and for you to follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord you have to be advancing your sanctification will not be make believe sanctification your sanctification Sanctification will not be a superficial surface level sanctification. It will be a sanctification that is deep in your heart and deep in your soul, a deep experience, and then the power of the Holy Ghost that you have that will see you through anywhere you find yourself advancing, seeking faith, saving faith, sanctifying faith strengthening faith look at second peter chapter one i'm looking at verse three according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to virtue look at verse 4 in verse 4 it says whereby a giving unto us everything we ought to have to confront every good liar everything we ought to have to despise the fire of Nebuchadnezzar everything we ought to have to tell the Sanhedrin whether they like it or not we will obey God rather than man everything we ought to have to have victory triumph and success in ministry he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness and he has given us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature think about that the divine nature that's the nature of god the nature of god in control in charge of every situation that he gives us that nature that's the overcoming nature that's the overpowering nature that is the nature that overthrows everything of the enemy a conquering nature he'll give you they will not conquer you the world will not conquer you the devil will not conquer you 
the flesh will not conquer you enemies will not conquer you and the people who stand in the way and they said okay let him come let her come by the time you get there they'll vanish out of your way you will succeed i will succeed because we are partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss look at number three here number three we're talking about god's promises possessed through appropriating strong faith appropriating strong faith what does that mean he has given you the promise rise and go over this jordan because every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon that have i given unto you you have to appropriate that go through your bible and see the promises that he has made the promises of freedom the promises of dominion the promises of victory the promises of triumph and you appropriate you say it is mine you interpret it it is mine you claim it it is mine you confess it it is mine what you confess you will possess who am i talking to there you will possess in jesus name because now it tells us that we appropriate and we appropriate this strong through the strong faith the strong faith number one is strong strong faith strong faith not a faith that the wind of adversity will blow here and there not a faith that all the circumstances all the vicissitudes of life that will drag you here and there is strong faith what kind of faith is that is a steadfast faith a steadfast faith a faith that says i know god has spoken he has the final say and because he has the final say what he has said will be what he has said will be in your life in jesus name number one it is a steadfast faith number two it's a strengthening faith you see faith strengthens us how the word the word of promise the word of power that what he has proclaimed brings faith faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god and it is a strengthening faith it is a steadfast faith and then it is a surpassing faith you see and with the faith you had 40 years ago when you are just a young person you are not even married at that time you have faith you didn't know what the world was you didn't know what difficulties were you didn't, you didn't know what troubles were faith yes that was good and the faith made you to overcome the pressure of the peers and the pressure of your colleagues but well, those were small small people actually there was nothing they could do against you except frown except you know make their mouth somewhere that hurts a little to a child but now 40 years after you're facing the collapse now you're facing all the giants and the land now you're facing the people and they have strong walls and high walls and all that the faith we have now will be a surpassing faith the faith that surpasses all the peculiarities of the past because it's a new day now it's a new time now that's why your faith needs to be developing it is this kind of faith that appropriates because it's strong because it's trending because it's steadfast because it is surpassing we're looking at romans chapter 4 and we're reading from verse 20 it says in romans chapter 4 verse 20 he staggered not at the promise of god through unbelief staggered not at the promise of god through unbelief the promise that god had given abraham was staggering 
unbelievable, incredible that at this age you will have a child and that child will be the one that will carry on the covenant the Lord had given you. That was staggering and that was incredible, almost impossible. But Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. But he was strong in faith. He was steadfast in faith. He was strengthened in faith. And he was surpassing. He had surpassing faith in the Lord. It says he was strong. You might be surrounded by people around you that laugh when the promise is given unto you. Because to them, that's impossible to them. That's incredible for them. It's a no-go area. And because of that, they laugh at the promise. But he, by personal decision, he, by personal dependence on God, he, by personal diligence in the examination of the word of God, strong in faith, strengthened in faith, steadfast in faith, surpassing the faith of all the people around him. It says he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. The promise was not even yet fulfilled, giving glory to God, because he counted those things which were not as if they were because he knew here is the God that cannot fail. Here is the God that has the power that cannot fail. Because of that, he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And then in verse 21, in verse 21, I'm being fully persuaded, fully persuaded. 100 years of age, you are going to have a child fully persuaded. The body is not functioning anymore. You're fully persuaded. The body of Sarah was as good as dead, yet fully persuaded persuaded and the biology does not support this expectation of looking for a child at this age yet he was fully persuaded and history the history of people around him of his family of his fathers and great grandfathers they didn't support this promise of expecting a child at this age and yet he was fully persuaded and his mind was telling him Abraham, don't make a fool of yourself. You know that at your age, at the age of Sarah, you know that this is an impossibility and yet it will not listen to the whispers of unbelief because he was fully persuaded and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. In your life, God is able to perform. In your ministry, God is able to perform and what appears impossible incredible what appears will not be done and you and you maybe you are saying if i had all this 30 years ago when he start when i started the ministry i would have i would have been in the sky but you know at a late hour now i'm old in the ministry and then i've carried on this way and this way and see what is happening now if you will believe that god is able he will do the undoable in your life. He'll do the incredible in your life. He'll do the unbelievable in your life. All you need to do, Abraham was just a man. He became a friend of God because of the faith that he had. And he believed in God and was fully persuaded that whatever it is, it may be contrary to what they call science. It may be contrary for what they call biology. It may be contrary for what they call history. But you're fully persuaded that that what he had promised he is able to perform there will be a performance in your life in Jesus name there will be no delay because the time of accomplishment has now come the time of fulfillment has now come and the Lord will perform and perfect all that he has promised in your life in Jesus name we're coming to number three now point number three we're looking at the divine presence of the 
omnipresent God. Always present in the sea. If you go to the depths of the sea, it's there. If you take the darkest and blackest night, it's there. He sees through the darkness. He sees through everything and through everywhere. And wherever you may be, the Lord is with you right there. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. The power of God will always be with you. The presence of God will always be with you. The, the promise of God will always locate you wherever you are in Jesus' name. Look at Joshua chapter 1. And we're reading from verse 5. Joshua chapter 1. We're looking at verse 5. It says, There shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Hold on. Hold on. What if you just realize now that today, that place you want to go, you want to go to an office there, you're asking for something there, you want to go to a local government there, you are demanding for something. What if you knew that there's no man in that local government, there's no man in that office, there's no man in that community that will say no to you, that will be able to stand before you, that anyone you talk to, anyone you confront, will say yes. You confront that one, yes. You ask that one, yes. You didn't say yes. They will not say no to you. You know why we don't make an effort? You know why we don't ask a question? You know why we don't demand anything? They might reject me. They might say no. They might say, oh, even the people that are higher than you are, greater than you are, they didn't get that and you have come here. And because we think of the rejection, because we think they are not approve of what I'm asking and they're going to say no, that's why we don't make the effort. But if you knew, as heaven knows, that anywhere you go and whatever you demand in the way of the duty that God has called you to, that no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. You will go places you have never gone before. You will ask for things you have never asked for before and the things that you to frighten you and to intimidate you, all those things will clear out of your mind because you know that you are called of God and no man shall be able to stand before you. When God calls us to ministry, we generally, and it's good, it's good. We have to find out, I am going to that place now. I'm going to preach there. I'm going to minister there. I'm going to establish a church there. And then we begin to find out our information. And they say, that place, they don't accept church. They don't accept that your karma and say, I'm going to build a massive church. It has never happened. They don't allow people to do that. And people who have gone there before, they run back. Because that place is hard soil. That place is an impossible place. And when we carry that in the mind, it is difficult to do the will of God. It is difficult to go ahead and do what the Lord wants us to do. What if you knew? What if today you're persuaded and you are sure to the death of your heart that as you go to that place you have been reading about, that place you've been hearing stories about, you'll go there and no man shall be able to stand before you. All the days of your life. You know, some people say, if I knew what I know now, when I was strong, when I was young, if I knew what I knew now, I would have done a lot for God. This year coming, coming year, 2023, you trust in God, you lean on God, you believe in God. In one year, you can do what you have not done in 20 years. Because now, the strong faith is there. The steadfast faith is there. 
the surpassing faith is there and you are able to take on any challenge because although you are keeping quiet the silent faith the silent the sightless faith and there is the singing faith you're not a mourning complaining person anymore you are rejoicing in the lord and you are singing and you are happy and you are excited because you know this coming year will be a year of accomplishment a year of victory a year of triumph a year of having Converts you have never seen in your life. It's a year of multiple converts in Jesus' name. Amen. Because the time has come for you. Amen. For, me, for me. That no man, magician, no man, occultic man, no man, that tough looking man, no man shall be able to stand before me before in jesus name as it was with moses so he will be with you he will not fail you he will not forsake you divine presence of the omnipresent god three things we're looking at here number one god's unfailing promise every day every blessed day god's unfailing promise now does the promise of god only work on sunday i'm asking a question does it work on monday does the promise of god work on monday on tuesday on rainy day on a sunny day on a dusty day, yeah. on a political day, yeah. does the promise of God work when you are in the village, yeah. when you are in the town? Yeah. Does the promise of God work when you are alone? Yeah. Does the promise work when you are with other people? Yeah. Every day, God's unfailing promise for every day. Number two, God's on assailable protection for honestly dutiful the honestly dutiful the people who say i will be at my post you know the older people of the past generation they used to sing i will be at my post i will die at my post the present generation we sing I will be at my post. I will live at my post. Please say amen to that. <laughs> you know, we're not looking for death, die in our post. Joshua, when he came to the land of Canaan, he didn't say, I will be at my post and I will die at Jericho. No, you cannot die at Jericho. Die at your post. You have to take the people to the whole land and cover all those strong cities. You will not die at your post. You will live at your post. You will succeed at your post. You are here today at your post. You'll keep on living. Tomorrow, next tomorrow yeah. next month yeah. next year yeah. and when god gives us a chance to come back again i'll see you strong at your post yeah. number two then the unassailable protection for the honestly dutiful number three is god's unceasing presence with engaged disciples the people who are making disciples and they carry on and on and on those people the lord grants them his presence the presence that is always there look at number one it's god's unfailing promise for every day look at the first part 
of that verse 5 it says in verse 5 there shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of thy life Deuteronomy chapter 11 I'm reading from verse 25 Deuteronomy 11 reading from verse 25 it says there shall no man be able to stand before you for the lord your god shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that ye shall tread upon as he has said unto you now the table is turning right now i said the table is turning right now Amen. those 12 spies went to the land of promise they carried the fruit they put on their shoulders and they came to tell the rest of the nation they were fearful of the canaanites but now for joshua for caleb and the people that have the spirit of Joshua and the spirit of Caleb, the table is turning. Amen. Instead of fearing them, they will fear you. Amen. The cohorts, the servants, and the disciples of the devil, and those who are dedicated to evil and they are swallowed up of evil you used to fear them but today the church will rise up like a giant and when they see those giants and champions coming those canaanites they'll be afraid of you you're not afraid of them anymore but they are afraid of you i heard the story of a young lady this lady went to do evangelism and wanted to do missions work in this particular locality but there was a strong man of the devil there herbalist terrible man and so he said message to the lady and said lady you don't understand this territory belongs to us and you are not permitted to come here please pack your load go to another place and the lady didn't understand the lady said i'm a child of god i'm a daughter of destiny daughters of destiny are you here yes. where are you daughters only not <laughs> not men don't just only daughters daughters of destiny where are you she was a daughter of destiny. God bless you. Put your hand down. And the man, that occultic man, uh, you know, shouted and said, Leave town. If you don't, we'll come to the square. That is the village square. And then we'll demonstrate the power. And this lady was not Pentecostal. She didn't know about Holy Ghost baptism and feeling of power, whatever. She was just a simple child of God. And so they came to the square. And the people gathered all around the square. And that man began to beat a kind of drum. And this lady, well, it was strange to her. She was just looking at it like that. And everything going on. And the man, as they were beating their drums and incantations and all that, lifted up from the ground literally and floated like this and then uh, the uh, lady the sister said Lord what will I do uh, God said go there and put your hand on her chest as she's floating there and then he puts her she went there put her hand and then the man went down immediately yeah. and then uh, the lady stood there and the fellow, just the hand of that lady touching him, he lost all his power. He became like an ordinary man. He got up and knelt down and said, you have the greater power, what should I do? And that lady directed him, he was converted. He became the first convert 
of that missionary lady and because everybody knew him in that community all those people repented no single unbeliever in that city and they built a church there and people from all around the other villages they were coming this is our day it is your day and the power of the Lord will go with you in Jesus name no man shall be able to stand before you today tomorrow next year and for the rest of your life in Jesus name look at number two here number two is the unassailable protection for the earnestly dutiful look at joshua chapter one reading from verse five there shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life all the days of your life as i was with moses so i will be with thee look at moses can you picture moses just walking in a very confident way those magicians were in the court of um, in the court of a pharaoh and then as they got there pharaoh said what are you looking for show me the evidence that you have power and he threw the rod now and it became a serpent and then pharaoh said magician what are you waiting for throw your rods now and he threw all their power all their rods now and then the rod of moses swallowed up all their rods all their serpents and they lost all their power we have, we have entered a new day in a new ministry when the people that she try to use that power when they confront us and we look at them we don't even want to shout we have that silent faith and silence a sightless faith and a singing faith they will lose all their powers before you in jesus name and they have used all their power to captivate people capture people imprison people and oppress people you are going there as deliverers you are going there as the people that will lift them up and the powers of darkness will bow before us everywhere we go in Jesus name we're coming to number three here number three is God's unceasing presence with engaged disciples look at Joshua chapter 1 verse 5 we're looking at the third part but let me start from the top there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life as i was with moses so will i be with thee i will not fail thee amen. i thought you'll say amen. amen and i will not forsake thee you know brothers and sisters there are times we allow our feelings to stand between us and our God. You know, I, I, maybe you say, I should have had 30 or one hour quiet time, devotional time this morning. And I didn't have all that one hour. I only had 15, 20 minutes. And then we allow that. I see the extra minutes you didn't have as driven away the presence of God. God is still there. And then sometimes you are, you know, doing something, you are happy, you are excited, you are on top of the world. And there's somebody before you that looks at you and looks now at you and belittles you. And their look makes your mind to sink. And then you say, oh, because my heart is sinking now and I'm not happy, I'm not on top of the world. I was excited before, but that person that looked at me and the way he saw me, the way she looked at me, I feel I'm sinking now. I am belittled. I'm like a nobody now. So the presence of God is not that the presence of God is still there. Our feelings don't drive away God. Our sight doesn't drive away God. The sunshine the heat, the sweating doesn't drive away, away God. The cold, chilly, it doesn't drive away God every day of your life. Whatever you feel, God will be with you. His presence will strengthen you. It will hold you up. And think of the greatest courage you ever had. Think of the greatest confidence you ever had. And think of the greatest 
greatest compassion you ever had and think of the greatest day the peak of your of your graph when you were just soaked with the word of god and you were sensitive to the power of god that peak will always remain in your life not by feeling not by emotion not by shouting not by sensing something nothing drives god away from his servant or from his child from the daughters of destiny and from the sons of purpose the lord is with you Amen. it will help you he will strengthen you. He will grant you victory. Triumph will be all through your life in Jesus' name. I will never leave thee. I will never fail thee. I will never forsake thee. So we can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. You will be triumphant in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. The Lord has spoken to us. We are his people and we are the called ones. And the Lord will be with you in the, on the field of ministry. He will not disappoint you.